U.S. President Joe Biden has announced billions of dollars of funding to help the country deal with the impact of climate change, which he calls a clear and present danger. He says the money will help communities protect their infrastructure from extreme weather. Many rice farmers in the north of Italy are on the brink of financial ruin as the region suffers from the worst drought in 70 years. The lack of water has destroyed much of the harvest. In a moment, we will look at the link between global heating and drought. But first, this report from DW's Max Sander. A marina full of stranded boats, fields of drooping sunflowers, and everywhere fountains with no running water. Scorching temperatures of up to 40 degrees have been plaguing northern Italy for weeks now and threatening some people's very existence, like the region's rice farmers. These plants are completely dead. They won't produce anything. There will be no crop here. 15 tons of harvest lost in this plot alone. The farmers simply couldn't provide enough water. Stefano Greppi is the head of the Coliretti Pavia Association, which represents farmers in the region. Italy's so-called golden rice triangle makes up half of Europe's entire rice production. The industry, which is highly dependent on water, is now facing a financial and environmental catastrophe. To our knowledge, nothing like this has ever happened in the last 70 years. According to the data available, a drought like this has never occurred. Never. Northern Italy depends on the Po River. Its 650 kilometers span the country from west to east. It is a source of life for all around it. But water levels have been dropping continuously over the last few years. So this summer, large parts of Italy's longest river essentially are looking like this. I'm walking on what used to be the Po's riverbed. And if you have a close look here, you can see the bottom is actually covered in uh, what is seashells, right? And this is dramatic for a number of reasons. Um, the people here in the region depend on this water for drinking water purposes, to create energy, and also for agriculture. Areas are now competing for the remaining water. A state of emergency has been declared in many regions. Experts say the situation is likely to occur again, but there are certain precautions that can be taken to alleviate future drought. There is focus on increasing the water storage capacities, meaning storing water in winter in big or small reservoirs. That, of course, depends on rainfall in winter, which has been scarce this year as well. Reducing leaks is another big topic in Italy, both for drinking water and agricultural purposes. The system efficiency is currently around 50 percent. Farmers like Stefano Greppi also know they will have to change. This season, they have already lost 30 percent of their harvest. We hope we'll get back to a climate which allows for rice production. Otherwise, we'll have to switch to other crops and adapt to a different type of water management. There's just not enough water for everyone. For now, all they can do is keep the pumps running and hope for falling temperatures. And above all, for rain. And Michael Singer is deputy director of the Water Research Institute at Cardiff University in Wales. He explained why climate change is causing water shortages like those we just saw in that report. Tell us a little bit more about this link between climate change and water scarcity. Why is it leading to shortages such as the ones that we just saw in that report? Yeah, the, the main thing to remember is that under a warming atmosphere, more water is drawn from the land surface back into the atmosphere. And that is leading to a concentration of climatic extremes such as drought and floods. And they don't always happen in the same place and they shift around the globe, um, such as what we're seeing right now in Italy. Um, the, when we have less rain, we have less soil moisture, we have less runoff and less stream flow in, in river channels and also lower groundwater tables. And this can lead to widespread effects across the landscape. And how will the lack of rainfall impact the global food supply, do you think? 
Well, it's really important to understand that um, most of the world is not um, irrigating um, crops. Only 20% of global agriculture is irrigated. So there are, there are large swaths of the world that are under subsistence agriculture and struggling under rain-fed agriculture that, um, where rains are failing. Um, a recent example of this is in the Horn of Africa, where there are, uh, is four failed rainy seasons in a row, leading to widespread famine and food insecurity. But we see this within the developed world as well. Um, clearly in Italy, we see um, a failed uh, rainy season in the winter and low um, snowpack that has ultimately led to um, a very hot, dry summer. And then you see the Po drying up and the impacts on irrigation and agriculture there. So um, there are, will be periods like this across the globe that um, where agriculture really suffers. So given that agriculture, as you've highlighted there, is the major user of water in most countries, do you anticipate that we're going to see increasing competition for water between countries? Um, absolutely. There, there are already um, major conflicts and discussions um, about water in places like Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt. There are um, conflicts between the U.S. and Mexico and other places around the world as well. Um, there is... It's often said that we will have future water wars, but I hope that um, we can avoid this dystopian future by potentially discussing right now how we share this sensitive um, resource across the globe. What do you hope might materialize in such discussions? What can the world do to safeguard its water supply? So the main thing is that there are many places in the world that have been suffering from this sort of circumstance already. Places like Australia, California, and the southwestern U.S. have gone through decades already of drought conditions. And they've had to make lots of hard choices, um, imposing restrictions on water use and creating compacts between agricultural, municipal, and societal interests to achieve a better outcome of sharing this precious resource. Um, there are many solutions that, have, that could be um, implemented, but it requires a, a deep conversation amongst interested parties. Thank you so much, Michael Singer, Deputy Director of the Water Research Institute, Cardiff University in Wales. We appreciate your time. Thank you.